Leonard Susskind, uh, what was it like to get into essentially a, a pretty big cosmological argument with Stephen Hawking? And be careful, because Hawking's one of my wheelchair boys. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're really tight. We're really tight. <laughs> it wasn't that physical. What was it like? It was fun and it was frustrating. It was incredibly frustrating. Um, Stephen had a view which was very, very difficult <coughs> to argue with. His ideas were based on very, very sensible ideas. A black hole is a place where nothing can get out of, but things can fall into it. And if things can fall into it and they can't get out, they're gone. But then the black hole evaporates. Stephen had proven that beyond anybody's uh, doubt. And so things fall into the black hole. They can't get out. The black hole evaporates. Poof, it's gone, just exactly as, uh, as Brian said. Um, it, it was unassailable. There was no way to argue the case. And yet, some of us, particularly Harad and myself, very, very strongly felt that this really undermined everything that we knew about physics. Everything that we know about physics today, and even much earlier, was based on a principle of physics which is so basic that we sometimes forget to mention it to our students. It's the idea that information never disappears. And I'll tell you what that means. Information means distinctions, distinctions between things. Um, a hydrogen atom is not, uh, is not a uh, oxygen atom. An oxygen atom is not a hydrogen atom. There are distinctions between these things. And it was a very, very basic principle of physics that distinctions never disappear, that they may get scrambled, that they may get all mixed up. But if you start with one configuration and you let it go, or you start with a different configuration which has different information and you let it go, they'll stay different. And Stephen was saying exactly the opposite. No matter what you throw into the black hole, in the end you get out exactly the same thing. It was extremely difficult to see what was wrong with what he was saying. It was even harder to make him understand that there had to be something wrong with what he was saying, so it was very, very frustrating. But at the same time, um, it was very exhilarating to, uh, to come up against this basic problem of conflict of principles. And if anything can break the impasses in physics, if there are no experiments available, it's conflicts of principle. When conflicts of principle arise, that's when major new paradigms can shift. And that's the excitement. That's really the excitement. Harold, so, explain to me why um, this problem with Hawking, this, um, uh, you know, the information can't go away as it seems as though Hawking's mathematics suggests it does, is different from something like, say, conservation of mass energy, where matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It's, it's different than that, right? Yes. <clears throat> it was a very fundamental problem. And the way I always saw it is Hawking was using quantum mechanics, in particular quantized fields, to derive his result. So quantum mechanics went in as, as starting point number one, and then general relativity and everything else, and they used all that to derive the black holes, radiate particles. From that, it was derived that there was information, and there was information disappearing. Well, the fact that information disappears is at odds with quantum theory itself. So he uses quantum theory to derive a result which basically was at odds with quantum theory. So there had to be a mistake somewhere. I shouldn't call it a mistake because what he did was by itself mathematically correct and nobody doubts that. But the final result had something in it that couldn't be true. And so this is what in physics we call a paradox. And like my friend Lenny has been saying, as soon as you encounter a situation of this sort in the physical world, we are very happy, actually. If there's a paradox, it means there's work for us to do. We have to clear this thing up. And if you look at the past, you know quite well that when people start to clear up paradoxes, new discoveries are being right. made. So you guys are friends. several cases, and that's why we're all so excited about this thing. There's something wrong. The derivation itself seems to be flawless, but there's something wrong anyhow with the result.